late December, I traveled out to Las Vegas for CEO Space, a week-long business conference aimed at explosive professional growth. I was immediately inundated with the proprietary networking system that CEO Space has established, in which business owners would tell me what they do and who they are. And I was challenged to give blindly, give my connections, my resources, introductions to high profile people in my network, give my skills, my expertise, give blindly in the most pure sense of cooperative capitalism. There was no talk of referrals. There was no talk of you do for me, I do for you. It was blind giving and blind collaboration. And it was weird. It was very, very weird. Because there's this seeming paradox between collaboration and competition. And it manifests itself not only between different businesses, but also inside organizations themselves. And if we look at it in a historical con context, it makes a lot of sense. Collaboration just yields questions. Why would I provide my resources for you? If we're in the same industry, how can we work together and not against each other? Why in the world would I put more people on a team if I want increased productivity? Because doesn't the old proverb say, if you want something done, do it yourself? So I had so many questions based on this collaborative model. And we do live, and largely did live, in a competitive world. It's not a surprise that Jack Welch in 1999 was named Manager of the Century by Forbes magazine for his hyper-competitive organizational model in which at the end of the year he would fire off the bottom 10% of his managers regardless of productivity, creating this ultra sense of competition inside his organization every single year. And it worked. And it did work in the past and it doesn't work in the future. And collaboration is disrupting competition. And the reason is this chart over here, when we talk about the exponentially growing rate of technological evolution. Things are moving faster. The economy is changing faster and faster. So business owners are forced to innovate at faster rates. A competition and a competitive model is too isolated and thus too slow to adapt to the changing needs. We need to adapt to customers' needs, employee needs, employer needs, board needs. We need to be constantly innovating to keep up with this evolving world. And we simply cannot do it in a competitive model. We look at 90% of Inc. 500 companies say that they collaborate with another Inc. 500 company on a daily basis. We look towards the future in the next 10 years in which we see that by 2020, group work will, will overtake individual work in close to 85% of companies. So we're heading toward this collaborative atmosphere. But it's not a surprise that some companies caught on a little faster than the rest of us. Disney, in 2013, brought in $41 billion of revenue through licensing alone, so your first grade daughter can go to school with the Cinderella logo on her backpack. A New York Times article is written about poverty in Africa, and a photo is licensed from Reuters to create mutually beneficial gains. It's not a surprise that collaboration is starting to rear its head. But competitors stop me. And they say, all right, collaboration sounds nice, and there are some businesses who can do it successfully. But what about the real world? What about in an emergency room? Who would we want operating on us? Would we want the hyper-competitive surgeon who fought his peers to become number one at Harvard Medical School? And collaborators disagree. We say, well, what if that surgeon wasn't 100% sure about the way he wanted to proceed in surgery? Would we want the competitive surgeon who was too afraid to ask his peers for help? Or would we want the collaborative surgeon who gathered information from his fellow surgeons and made a uh, calculated decision based on information they worked together to add? I think I'd definitely choose the latter. But who am I to decide which one we choose? I'm 18 years old and I've never held a corporate job. I know nothing about company culture from raw experience. But what I do know is that collaboration is in my DNA. From when I was very young, and I'm a very competitive person, but from a very young age, I was living in a collaborative household. When I would have a problem or a new solution or a new opportunity, I would talk with my family about it. And my brother Aaron would give me a crazy idea and my brother Josh a political one. And my mom the nice thing to do and my dad the tough thing to do. And I would gather this information and make a calculated, collaborated decision. And I guess collaboration was just in my DNA. So when I started my career in entrepreneurship, I just tried to apply the same model. 
I started a company called Students for Students College Advisory in the higher education consulting space. And all I did was take four smart kids, left brain, right brain, different skills, different abilities, put them in a room with a common goal, let's get a kid into college. And we worked together, collaborated on files, and got kids into Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, Dartmouth. I did the same model in the marketing consulting space when I started Millennial Marketing Strategy. I took four high quality developers from the top colleges around the country, put them together and said, let's have this client explode on social media. Let's build this client the best e-commerce website we've ever seen. And it worked. And we are now running two multinational consulting firms solely based on this collaborative model of success. And then we went to other admissions firms and other marketing companies and worked with them and collaborated in our own industry with our direct competitors because collaboration does make a whole lot of sense. But there's, it's more than just me that's doing this, so let's talk about people in the real world who are also collaborating and found this little niche. The first is a story I'll tell you about Ken Courtright. Ken is the CEO of an Inc. 5000, soon to be Inc. 500 internet domain company. In 1998, Ken owned a video store and he walked down the mall and to a pizza shop, Louie's Pizza Shop in Illinois. And Ken took 5,000 flyers from his video store and smacked them down on the, on the desk of Louie's Pizza Shop. Uh, and, and he said, Louie, uh, what I want you to do is take these 5,000 flyers and put them on the next 5,000 pizza takeout boxes. And Louie said, get out of my store. <laughs> and then Ken said, no, wait, Louie, what about this? You give me 10,000 coupons for $5 off your next two pies that you order, and I'll put them on the next 10,000 video rental boxes. And Louie's Pizza Shop grew 6%, and Ken's uh, video store grew 18%. And they maintained their growth. The next example is uh, management consultant firms, and it's not a surprise that they do a lot of research. And Deloitte, a few years ago, came out with a study called The Collaborative Economy in which they found that companies that collaborate inside and with their direct competitors in their organization were five times more likely to retain employees, two times more likely to be profitable, and two times more likely to outgrow their competitors. So it's not a surprise that these management consulting firms operate in a collaborative model, where they send four of their top consultants with different skills, left brain, right brain, to collaborate on a single problem with a single solution that they're looking for. And it's also not a surprise that they can charge $300,000 to their top clients to do it. Then we have hackathons. Hackathons are really re recently popular in the college community. So as, a, as opposed to each individual college student trying to be the next Zuckerberg and start the next Facebook, they come together and for 36 hours, their sole task without sleep is to come up with one project, one new creation. And things coming out of hackathons from the four to six people college person teams nuclear fusion test reactors, virtual reality headsets that are the closest thing we've ever had to real avatar movement. So we see these incredible things happening and we stop competing with each other for 36 hours and come together and really collaborate. But it's great to say that we can collaborate. It's great to say that it's important, but how do we actually do it? How do we stop competing inside our companies and out? And to me, it's as simple as turning a triangle into a circle. The triangle represents competition. We see fear, punishment, and exploitation. Fear in Jack Welch's GE of being fired. Punishment when you're outcompeted by your competitors. Exploitation, if you've ever been to a networking event, you feel exploited and uncomfortable when people are asking for your business and your referrals without any promise of mutual business growth. It's a negative feeling. What if we were able to turn that into a circle in which we could make a common vision, a common solution and the spokes represent celebration and recognition and accountability and resolve. And we could start collaborating. We could stop competing for market share and we could expand the market. So how do we actually do this? How do we go from the triangle to the circle? Firstly, we identify a common vision. So two marketing companies can work together on a project or work together to exchange clientele if they identify the common vision. Two brothers who own a family business can stop fighting with each other over power and who's right if they identify the common vision. We also have to clarify our needs. What do we need to go forward? At CEO Space, they ask me, what do I need to take my business to the next level? Clarify our needs and know how to ask for it. We could take even smaller steps, though. We could start calling our employees team members and not employees and work with them, not against them. 
we could be constantly on the lookout for joint ventures and think just because I'm a mortgage banker and you're a mortgage banker, we don't have to compete against each other and there may just be a way for us to help mutually grow business. When we take a step back, we have to stop competing and start collaborating. We have to stop fighting for market share and start expanding the market. Let's change the way we work and let's change the way we live. Thank you.